And the tyres we have this year, you've obviously got one extra compound. But what's more important is you've chosen it several months in advance. So for example, for Shanghai, back in January, we chose those tyres. And you don't know what teams have until you turn up really a few weeks before the event. So the main differences are now, as soon as you understand what sort of choices people have made, you try and understand what their thinking is and what process they're going to go through over the course of the weekend and understand how their perception of what the strategy is differs to your own. Um, from there, we do lots of pre-event work even before we've turned up at the circuit. I would say something close to 100 to 200,000 200, simulations. That's fairly normal. We've done that previously, but now with this extra tyre, we're having to look into a lot more depth over each and every car and how they might approach the weekend. In terms of qualifying and the race, typically you would always use the softest of the compounds because in qualifying two, that tyre is your race start tyre and obviously you have to make it through to Q3. Now in Shanghai we did something a little bit different. Um, as a team, we'd been planning that since January. It's actually a fantastic feeling that we executed it, but since January we had the inception of that idea and to bring that forward and make sure it all panned out as expected uh, several months later was fantastic. And the difference then is, as you go into the race, you understand a lot more about how different cars will approach things. Different cars use tyres in, in very different ways. Ours is a little bit different to a Ferrari, it's a little bit different to a Red Bull. You take that into account and in the race you understand therefore how many stops they might be doing and how they might be approaching it. But with this extra tyre, the great effect is that now you're not really committed to a two stop or a three stop or a one stop. During the race you have a little bit more flexibility to approach it in a different way and try different things. So would you say the team is coping with it well after three races? I would. I mean, it's. What's important to understand is this isn't just one person, it's just not me making this decision. It's a big team behind uh, this. We have RSR, as we call it effectively, the race support room. And we have 25 engineers over the course of the weekend assisting us. They're doing great work. They're understanding how people are using tyres, what's going on. Um, we have three or four tyre experts. They get together with myself, uh, the chief race engineer, and a few other people in order to make the decision on the tyres. So that's the first point. It's not one individual, it's really, it's a group effort. And here in Mercedes, that works very well. Um, as a result of that, I think we've ended up with a, a set of tyres that uses inherently the knowledge of over five or six core people in the team, over nearly 100 years worth of really experience in Formula One, added together to choose the tyres. And on reflection of all the races so far, there's nothing we would have done differently. And that's really a great, I suppose, uh, answer to your question. We're pretty happy with the way we've gone so far. So looking at the Chinese Grand Prix, obviously as you mentioned, the, the soft tyre for Q2 for Nico working really well and, and a little bit of a strategy play there. Um, in terms of the race, what challenges did you face and how did you execute the strategy? With Nico, it was really just all about keeping our nose clean, uh, as we were sort of saying in the business, making sure that he didn't have any issues early on. Uh, we had a tyre that even if he wasn't first going into Turn 1, we could get ourselves out of jail. He could run a little bit longer than the Red Bulls and the Ferraris. Uh, you have a little bit more coverage against an early safety car which I mean it all panned out uh, not planned obviously but the safety car came out and it worked very much into Nico's favour and from then onwards it was just executing the plan we went with him beforehand he wasn't under pressure from the cars behind and we executed a two-stop with Lewis very different situation obviously he caught up at the beginning not his fault lost his front wing and had further car damage and what happens at that point is you really need to understand how much car damage there is and what the impact of it is. And that's quite difficult to do. These, these machines are finely honed now. They're very much tuned to work in one particular way. And all of a sudden you take part of it away, it behaves very differently. And what we found is we lost a bit of performance, but we also lost the ability to look after the tyres in the same way as other people were. Um, during the race, we tried two or three different things. So with, Lew with Lewis at the back, we had three sets of softs. That was one of our tactics going into the race. The soft was a great tyre in Shanghai, and the intention was to run all three sets if we could with Lewis. Uh, when the early safety car came out, we tried what was called a double shuffle. Haven't done one of these in a year, uh, years actually, but it's a fantastic uh, event. And again, that was a, a team effort. There were some suggestions come from the factory. Have we tried this? Have we thought about this? And we executed it at the track. Um, can you just explain what a double shuffle is? I can. So the tyre rules, as they are now, all the sporting regulations, are that you have to run both compounds in the race. You have to run effectively um, two, in, a, in a dry race two different dry compounds. And one of them has to be the Prelite compounds. Uh, of which was either a soft or a medium in Shanghai. Um, our problem was we didn't really want to run the super soft in the race if we could, and the medium was a little bit slow for Lewis. We wanted this aggressive attacking at uh, strategy for him. 
And what you therefore do, we started the race on soft, he had his issues, we put him back on the soft tyres just to see how he could get back into the field. So we hadn't run the other compound yet, and when the safety car came out, what you do effectively is you take that opportunity to come into the pit lane, change the tyre that you're not interested in, throw it away, go back out, loop back round, stop again, change back to the tyre that you want, and now that's it. You've completed all the requirements to end the race. You never need to run that super soft or the medium ever again. And from now onwards, we could have done three stints on soft. The unfortunate, and actually fortunate in many regards as well, was that one of his sets of tyres was cut, quite heavily cut, and in fact it was the set that was on the car. Had he continued, we would have had a, a most likely a tyre failure, unfortunately. So actually what we did was very lucky in some regards because we found that problem. Conversely, it meant that we couldn't execute what was, uh, I thought, quite a good strategy at that point in time, so we had to fit the mediums a bit later on. So what I've tried to do here is create a, a graphic view of how the strategy has changed across the two years due to this extra tyre that's been involved. So 2015, we had the soft and the medium. So the sort of yellow colour for the soft, the silver for the medium. As we go and look at it here, this is what we did last year. All cars, near enough, did this one stop, starting on soft, going to medium. That was pretty much across the field. You had some that started on medium and went to soft, but all of them did a one stop strategy. Conversely, in 2016 now, with this third compound that's been added, you can see that we've gone from just this one simple strategy here, which still exists, cars could still do this soft medium in 2016, but they could also, if they wanted to, start on super soft and do a one stop, so super soft medium, or do these two stop strategies here. So you've gone from one viable strategy to really three or four absolutely viable strategies and all of them have their benefits and weaknesses. The two stop obviously you're stopping again, you're coming through the pits, but you're so much faster now than this medium runner here at the end of the race, so you get the interaction and the overtaking even at Melbourne. So roughly three to four times the amount of strategic options in Melbourne this year. As we go through, Melbourne obviously was a lower number of stops, but as you go through to Bahrain, same thing, we had the soft and the medium. And this is what everyone did. There were a few exceptions, but fundamentally, 70% of your field did this soft, soft, medium, two-stop strategy. This year, however, three compounds now. You can either do a two-stop, starting on super soft or starting on soft. It's not a problem. They both, uh, they both have their viabilities. This really is probably more for the cars than the top eight. Running soft in the medium, medium at the end. But these three stop strategies were absolutely viable. And in fact, you saw a lot of the front runners using them. So starting on the super soft, and then you can either take another set of super soft, then soft, then medium, or two sets of soft, or you can shuffle the soft in around as you want to. Um, the fact of this is, again, it's three, I mean, in this case, actually more than that. It's about five times the amount of strategic options across the year, um, which is great. But it gets better. As you go to tracks like Shanghai, even more options. Again, 2015, what did we have? Well, us and Ferrari ran two sets of soft and then a medium. The rest of the field ran two sets of medium. So two stop, all round. This year, there's still some viable two stop options. In fact, that's what won the race with Nico, two sets of soft and a medium. You can start on super soft and still achieve the same result. But now, have a look at the amount of three stop options available. And on this, all of these are within one to two seconds of each other, which is what's great about it. Ferrari were thinking of doing this top one here, so two sets of super soft, two sets of soft. Um, as you go down the field, um, Red Bull actually ended up doing this strategy here, so super soft, two sets of soft, and then a medium at the end. All of these are viable entities and options. This very bottom one here is what we would have done with Lewis had it all panned out. So no safety car off the start, we would have done three sets of soft, super soft right at the end. It would have been quite exciting. So great rules uh, in as much as so many strategic options available for you in the race right now. Well, James, thank you so much for helping us decode strategy and tyres. Uh, we'll catch up with you later in the season. Fantastic. Thank you very much.